Your Honor, I'll make a brief opening statement. Um, the, okay. The working order that the party, or the, excuse me, the current order that the parties have is from 2016 that awards my client sole legal and sole physical custody with reasonable rights um, of parenting time. Um, after the entry of that order, we do agree that the parties move back in together and, con and continue to reside together until the early parts of 2022. We were last before this court just regarding summer parenting time, and you indicated that it would be week on week off parenting time, and that um, you would hear the matter as to um, uh, custody and parenting time if we were unable to work it out. Um, Mr. Schaefer didn't advise the court, and that's why this hearing is set, because we are unable to work out the issues of um, parenting time and custody. Uh, my client wishes to retain sole um, physical custody. She's um, in agreement to share the legal custody with um, the um, defendant at this time, but um, we believe that the proofs will show that um, the established custodial environment rested with my client and that she um, was and continues to be the primary care provider for the party's three minor children. So we are asking that um, the custody remain as my client having sole physical custody um, with um, the parenting time as currently ordered, Your Honor. I, I wish to make an opening statement, Your Honor. Okay, uh, go ahead. I'm not sure there's gonna be a lot of uh, basic facts in dispute. Uh, these uh, parties have lived together for 13 years until March 1 of 2022. Uh, the prosecutor got involved in this matter in 2016 because uh, they were not married and they have three children uh, together. And as a result of that, uh, Mr. Gilbert got involved in this and there is a prosecutor's order with the standard uh, uh, provision. Uh, regardless of that, these parties never separated. They have lived together continuously until March 1 of 22. They have continuously co-parented and raised these three children who are now 12 and there are twins that are seven. And they have uh, co-parented this and then uh, in March uh, 1 of 2022, the uh, plaintiff mother uh, left the home uh, and found somebody else that she was enamored with. Uh, since the separation, my client has, uh, uh, has a relationship with another party also, uh, and they have gone their separate ways. Uh, but they have continually based, even since March, uh, had a week on, week off, and the uh, summer temporary order continued until March, excuse me, April, I'll try it one more time, October 28th. Uh, October 28th is when uh, it became that the plaintiff would not comply with the week on and week off. Uh, but in spite of that, over the, uh, in December, uh, they split the uh, uh, Christmas vacation. So there's been basically a week on week off uh, pending this hearing. Uh, strangely enough, uh, the breakup uh, in October 28th from the week on week off was based on an ancillary matter of the payment of a bill and some personal property. And it became a, uh, uh, a quid pro quo argument. Well, you, you pay this bill and then I will let you see your kids. And uh, that is what uh, prompted the, uh, the breakdown. Uh, there is an established custodial uh, environment, no doubt. And it's with both of these parents for, uh, for all of the 12 years of the oldest and seven years for the, the two younger ones. And uh, that should be continued. The proofs will show that my client has been an integral part uh, and probably uh, more so than uh, the mother of raising these children. He has supported them continuously. Uh, he has worked continuously. He has them uh, on his medical insurance now and throughout their lives. He has participated in their extracurricular activity, he has taken them to school, he has participated in everything that a full-time parent should do. And to now to say, well, because we have a discrepancy about who's gonna pay a bill or return personal property that you don't get to see your kids or on a regular basis or an equal basis is not uh, consistent with what the facts are here. Uh, Your Honor, uh, I think the proofs are gonna show there's a established custodial environment for uh, both of these parties throughout the lives of the three children. I think the children look to both of them uh, for uh, guidance and nurturing, and that should be continued. Uh, the, the proofs are going to show that my client has the ability under the factors of the Child Custody Act to support and the capacity to support them uh, uh, emotionally, uh, lovingly, and financially, uh, that he has done so, which is the proof in the pudding. And in all due respect, 
the uh, joint legal and physical custody of these children on a week on week off basis should continue. And that will be our request, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Schaefer, uh, you can call your first witness. I will, Your Honor. I'm going to uh, call them out of what would be a normal order just because of schedules of other people. And this time I would call Madeline Sawyer uh, to the stand. And uh, do you know uh, Mark <coughs> Lugowitz in this particular matter? Yes, I do. And do you know uh, Kristen uh, Newby? Um, yes, from Mark and the children. Okay. And how long have you known Mark? Um, so I actually met Mark back in 2003 um, when he played football with my brother. Um, we, I mean, we were acquaintances then. We started talking here in March of 2022. Okay. And uh, are you are familiar with uh, the relationship between uh, Kristen and Mark and the three children that they have? Um, so their current relationship, yes. Not while they were together, other than in passing and like through Facebook posts and stuff. But I was not a friend of theirs together. Um, nor was I talking to Mark during that time. You know, I just saw posts from them on Facebook. Kristen, um, I would see her at the dance studio in the school. Our youngest kids go to school together and they dance together. Okay. You, you have children, is that correct? Correct. How many children do you have? I have two. And do you and Mark live together at the present time? Um, yes. I mean, he stays here. His address is in Albion. Okay. And so, so he has a separate home in Albion, but he stays with you periodically at your home. Is that correct? Um, he stays here to be closer to the children. Okay. And have you become familiar with uh, the three children that Mark and Kristen have? Yes. And uh, uh, have has there been an amalgamation of uh, your children and their children into a family unit uh, since March of 22? Absolutely. Okay. And, and how would you describe your relationship with the three children of Mark? Um, I think we have a pretty good relationship. <clears throat> um, the girls, they always want to be around. Um, you know, they, they talk to me, they're loving, they're, you know, we have that typical, I guess, step-parent, step-child relationship. Um, Trenton, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Um, same with him. I mean, he, <clears throat> anytime he needs something, he reaches out to me. If, you know, anything's going on between his mom and his dad, and he needs somebody to step in between, he'll, you know, say something to me. And I try to talk to Mark, you know, so there's a better relationship between him and Kristen. So maybe they can co-parent a little better together, but the kids, you know, they can find stuff in me as well as they do with their parents. Okay. And uh, are you employed? Yes. Where are you employed? Um, I am employed at the Battle Creek VA. And what is your position there? Um, as of yesterday, I was actually detailed to the supervisory medical support assistant. So I got um, a promotion yesterday before I left work. Well, congratulations. What, how long have you been at the VA? Um, going on seven years. Okay. And uh, what are your work hours? I work 7.30 to 4, Monday through Friday. And that is the day shift, correct? Correct. Okay. And um, have you observed Mark uh, in the relationship with his three children? Yes, I have. And, and what have you observed in that regard as uh, his relationship with the three children? Um, I think they have a great relationship. Every time the kids come over, they're excited to see him. Um, when they're here, they spend a lot of time with him. They... Um, I mean, to the point where, you know, in the middle of the night, the girls will come up and they'll want to cuddle with their dad because when he's here. Um, and then <clears throat> um, Trenton, the same, you know, he, him and his dad have a great relationship. They play games together. They, you know, they go to motocross races. The kids are they're always excited to be around him. They always want to spend time with him. And as of the last uh, two months, anytime they have to leave, they get upset that they have to leave. Yep. And have you uh, observed uh, Mark participate with the kids in their extracurricular activities? Yes, as long as he has a schedule and knows when and where they have to be and when their sporting events are, he 100% makes the effort to go if he can be there. Okay. And have you ever seen anything inappropriate that Mark has done in relation to the children? No. Okay. Uh, uh, in your uh, observations, does Mark appear to be a, a good dad to his kids? Yes. Um, no further questions, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Terranova. Thank you, Your Honor. Is it is the last name Sauer? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Ms. Sauer. Um, how many bedrooms do you have in your home? I have three. Okay, and can you tell me the sleeping arrangements at your home when all of the children are there, including yours and Mark's? Okay, so as of right now, um, both my daughters have a bedroom. But let me let me say, I did not buy my house when Mark and Kristen split up. My home was my home for myself and my two children. 
Oh, I understand. I'm just asking what, but where do they, yeah. So currently asking, trends. I'm asking about where the children sleep. So Trenton sleeps on the couch as of right now. However, I do have the capability of giving Trenton a bedroom and putting the four girls in a bedroom together and Mark and I having a separate bedroom. Okay. So you said as of right now, um, how long have the children been staying at your home? Kristen requested that they stay at my house during the summer months as she did not want Mark's mother or sister-in-law watching the children. And she felt like they were better fit over here while Mark was at work. Okay. So my question was, when did they start? So is it the summer they started staying at your home? Yes, ma'am. The girls spent the night a few times before this. Okay. Trenton didn't start staying here until the court order. I want to say it was the second week that Mark had them. So prior to the summertime, they were not staying with you on the defendant's parenting time. The girls were. So the girls would stay with you at your home and the defendant, but Trenton would not stay at your home at the, during that time prior to the summer? Um, no, he would stay at his house in Albion with his grandmother, his aunt, and his stepbrother. So would um, the defendant exercise parenting time with the girls at your house at the same time then that Trenton was staying at the house with the defendant's mother? So Mark would split the day or Trenton would come over here, but he would like to stay at his grandma's house with his stepbrother so they can play video games and spend time together as well. Okay. And then, so since the summer, um, you indicated that, um, you know, Mark stays at your house. Since the summertime until now is all of the parenting time that the defendant has exercised at your home. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then currently Trenton sleeps on the couch. You and um, the defendant have a bedroom and then the girls all share the other, or the, excuse me, the girls split the other two rooms. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And what is the defendant's work schedule? Um, honestly, it depends. His work schedule is 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Sometimes he gets called in for overtime. So sometimes he goes in at eight. He goes in at 8 p.m.? Sometimes. Okay. How often does that occur? I'm going in at 8 p.m. Um, yeah. Two to three days a week. So two to three days per week, his schedule is actually 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And then the other remaining two to three days would be 10 p.m. till 6 a.m.? No, I don't believe that was a testimony. I'm sorry, I probably did misstate that. Excuse me. So 8 p.m. till 6 a.m. And you indicated that happens two to three times a week. If he's called in for overtime, yes. I mean, it's not a set every single week he goes in two to three days a week. That's if he's told the morning before that he has to be in at 8 p.m. tonight. And then what time does he leave the home when he has to work at 8 p.m.? 7.20. When he has to work at 10 p.m., is he leaving at 9.20 then? Yeah, in between 9.15, 9.20. And then when does he return home in the morning? By 6.45. Does he work five days a week or six days a week? Again, that really depends on if they're asking him to work overtime. He is scheduled to work five days a week. How often does he work that sixth day of, sixth day of the week? Um, since I've known him, I would say maybe, so I've, known, I've been talking to him since March, I would say maybe three months. He's had to work a six to seven day schedule. If like if consecutive, I would say if consecutive, we were counting consecutively out of the last 10 months, I would say maybe three of those months, he would have worked total six to seven days a week. Oh, and so there's some in seven days you've just indicated. So he, his Monday is te technically Sunday. So yeah, I mean, yes, there are some days that he works seven days a week. Some weeks. Okay. And then, so can we presume that you're providing the care for the children when um, their father's at work? Well, yes, but they're sleeping, so. What time do the children go to bed at your home? Um, so they go to bed between 8.30 and 9. And then what time are they waking up in the morning? Well, I typically leave around the time Mark gets here. I leave by 7 o'clock in the morning to get to work. They are still sleeping when I leave. So as far as I know, they get up around 7.30. I mean, I'm not physically here when they get up in the morning. 
I have nothing further, Honor. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Schaefer. Just a couple of follow ups. Uh, uh, the children and Mark have been staying with you at your home during the summer at the request or insistence of Kristen. Is that accurate? Yes, um, she did not want his sister in law or his mother watching the kids. I believe there are some text messages to this effect okay. um, that she preferred them to be at my house. So uh, Mark complied with that request. Is that correct? We all have. Yes. Okay. And um, Mark has a home uh, available to him in the Albion area. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And um, does as far as you know, uh, the children are still asleep when uh, you leave for work and Mark is home to care for them and getting them off to school and so forth? So in between him dropping our older two off at school and the younger ones getting up, my parents live right next door. So my dad willingly comes over and makes sure that in between the 15, 20 minutes Mark's gone dropping them off, that everything is okay. Okay. Uh, but uh, so it's taken care of by Mark and or your father after uh, you leave. Is that right? Correct. Is it your understanding that Mark uh, drops the kids off at school? Yes, on the weeks that he has them or the days that he has them, yes, sir. Okay, what school do they go to? Town. Okay, that's a Marshall address, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Is there an Albany uh, recross? Thank you, Your Honor. So when you are leaving for work, your father comes to your home to watch the younger children? He's right next door, yes, ma'am. Right, so my question was, he comes to your home every morning? Yes, ma'am. At what time does he arrive at your home? So Mark drops the Mark leaves with the older two about 715. So he comes over about 715. And he stays until 730 when he returns. Yes. Thank you. I have nothing further. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Seller. Uh, that will conclude your testimony. Uh, you're excused. Have a good day. Thanks. You as well. Uh, Mark was to the uh, stand, please. Okay, <clears throat> sir, uh, we'll have you raise your right hand and be sworn in, then we'll proceed. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Schaefer, when you're ready. Uh, state your full name and spell your last name for the record, please. Mark Anthony Lockwitz, W-O-L-K-I-E-W-I-C-Z. -E and... Uh, you are the uh, father of uh, three children that you have with Kristen, is that correct? Correct. Could you uh, give me their names and uh, uh, their ages? You and uh, Kristen lived together and raised these children for how many years until you split? Well, we were together 13 years total. And then um, back in 16, we had the little little um, interruption, um, got back together and we've been we resided together since then. All right, and uh, there was a, a 2016 order that the prosecutor uh, brought uh, in relation to uh, support and uh, custody. Uh, did you people ever uh, follow that order or did you uh, reconcile? We reconciled, it really, it, it didn't really stand um, before you know we were back together um, and, we care, and we continued on the relationship that we had prior to that. All right, and uh, for that 13 years or the 12 years when you had children, mm -hmm. uh, have you both raised these children in the same home? Absolutely. And. Um, and did that continue until you split in March of 22? Correct. And when did you split in March of 22? Um, it was it was March 1st or March 2nd. Um, I think by the by the third or fourth, she had she had left and um, moved in with with her other half. Okay. And um, did there come a time uh, from March until uh, a motion was filed in May of 22 that you people didn't agree on where the children should be, or did you split the children then? Um, there was an argument again. There was um, some altercations on who she wanted with the kids and who she didn't. Um, she asked that when they were when they came here, she wanted them here in Marshall. So that's that was what we did to comply with her request, um, and, and, and that was that. And since uh, the order that was pursuant to a motion in May of twenty two, where is one week on, one week off, has that continued until October twenty eighth? Correct. Uh, and so you, you two split uh, week on week off until October 28th. What happened on October 28th that, that uh, prompted us to come back to court and ask for a hearing? Um, so we had a little dispute about a, um, a, a dental, dental bill that she requested that I, I was required or I should pay the whole bill. I mean, I denied that. 
Um, and then the, the custody thing um, went back to her favor. She had went um, printed off her thing at the courthouse. I don't know if, I don't know when the temporary order was supposed to stop te um, technically to the end of the summer months. Um, and, and then October 28th was when she, she didn't give me the week on week off no more. Okay. And uh, did you split uh, the Christmas time with the kids? Yep. So I had them, I think they got out of school the 22nd or 23rd. I had picked them up Christmas Eve, returned them Christmas Eve. I picked them up Christmas day at two o'clock. Um, I kept them until the 20, 29th. She had taken the kids to my sister's house. They returned the first, the second, first or the second. And I had them until last night. All right. And um, did she uh, text you and communicate with you that unless uh, you resolve the uh, uh, debt issue or the property issues that uh, she was not going to let you have agreed to have the children? I mean, more more or less, I didn't I didn't have them um, per the temporary order in the summer after the after October twenty eighth because of the bill. So I would say yes, because um, I didn't I didn't have them week on week off after that. Okay, it was on the weekends. I was told I was only getting them on the weekends. All right, and have you been a uh, uh, a co parenting parent for these children uh, throughout their lives? Absolutely. And uh, tell me what uh, domestic duties you did uh, continuously until March 1 of 22? Um, I mean, as far as being there for the kids, you know, I worked, um, she was a stay-at-home mom. Um, I worked a lot so that way she could do the extra extra curriculars with the kids. Um, working working the third shift is what works best for me. You know, the games are on the weekends. So that allows me to attend the games. Um, it, as far as that, I mean, as, as a basic father figure, I was there for my kids like I should be or any, any dad should be. And did you uh, uh, participate in the extracurricular activities of the kids? Um, as far as taking them to practices and, and picking them up, yes, when I can, any games, yes, I was there when I was available to be there. Okay. And did your uh, night shift make you available uh, to get them to school and to uh, participate in their extracurricular activities? It, it, it worked out best for that, yes. Um, working night shift, working the overtime on first shift, most of the games had happened um, Saturday and Sunday. So working the first shift, you know, on the weekend, obviously if the games are at 9 to 10 or 10 to 11, I would absolutely miss those if I was on a first shift basis. Um, as, as far as the third shift, um, when we resided together back in Albion, I would get, I would come home. I would help her get the littles to school. Um, I would take the kids to the bus. Um, she would go off. She would um, do her cleaning jobs on the side. If she wasn't able to get the kids off the bus at 415, I would wake up. I would pick them up from the bus as well. Um, and then she would be home shortly after. Okay. And uh, since uh, the temporary order and since you've been uh, having week on week off since the separation, uh, tell me what the schedule is for the kids when they're in school. So the schedule is I get home, I get home about 6, 640, 645 in the morning. Um, our two older kids are up and ready for school. Uh, my girlfriend leaves at seven. I leave here about 710, 715 to take them to school. Um, her dad comes over, watches those littles until I come back. When I get back, I wake up the littles. We get, uh, we get dressed. We do breakfast. We brush our teeth. We sign agendas. We pack lunches. Um, most, I'd say eight times out of 10, they do very well. They have a little bit of play time. I leave here about 815, 820 to drop them off for school. Um, I come home. I do what I have to do. I go to bed. Um, the older kids, I think get out at school at two 20. Um, so my girlfriend's mother picks up the older kids for me so I can resume sleeping. Um, the little kids, the, the younger kids, I should say, get out of school. I think at three 30, three, three, five, they get off the bus here at my girlfriend's house at four. So we, I'm either up by then at three 50 to pick them up from the bus or my girlfriend's mom picks them up. And then when they get home about four 10, I, I get up and I'm up for the rest of the day. Okay. So you uh, made yourself available to get them, uh, to school and to receive them back from school. Absolutely. Okay. Correct. Yep. And, um, have you uh, always financially supported these kids? Yes. And uh, where do you work? Uh, Tenneco. And uh, how long have you worked at Tenneco? Um, it'll be four years coming up in June. And what is your income at Tenneco? Um, hourly or, or like for gross last year or? You, you want hourly or? Okay, give me hourly. Hourly is uh, 20, 24.88. And what was your gross for last year? I think I grossed uh, 78. Just under 80. Okay. And uh, does Kristen work at the present time? Um, I know when we when we first split up, she was doing some part-time for um, the accounting place where we have our had our taxes done for all our years that we had been together. I wouldn't say all of them. I would say majority of them. Um, and then that became a part, that was only part-time. And I know um, she did part-time for the accounting business. And then she also cleaned Kathy's house on the side, whatever kind of deal they had at that, I'm not sure. Um, so... Again, I don't think that was a permanent thing. That was a temporary thing. As I see in some paperwork, she didn't work for some months. 
Um, okay. After that. Uh, is she physically able to work? Yes. yes. Uh, have you uh, always carried the medical insurance uh, since you've been at Tenneco? Yes. And are you currently carrying their medical uh, uh, through Tenneco? Correct. Yep. We just had to renew for the beginning of the year. So I carry dental, vision, medical, um, disability, liability. Um, I, I guess everything everything they had to offer for me and the, and the kids were was covered is covered. Okay. Life insurance. Uh, how would you describe your relationship with your three kids? I think it's absolutely great. Um, I think we do a lot of activities. We get along great. Um, they like to come over. They don't like to go home. Um, if they need something, they come. They come to me and say, "Hey, I need this." You know, we get it taken care of. Um, I think. I think their bond with me is is again as um, stable as a standard standard father should have with their kids. Okay, and uh, and you you think your bond is good, and and you uh, you love your kids? Oh yeah, absolutely. Do they appear to love you? Yes. And um, and you are able and willing to give them uh, the affection and to continue raising the children. Is that correct? Absolutely. And uh, has there ever been a religion or a creed in your relationship with the kids and Kristen during the uh, the 13 years that you have been together? No. Um, you have the uh, financial means to properly care for the kids and provide medical insurance. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And uh, how long have you had this sort of relationship with your kids? I think ever since, as, as they've grown up, it's just become stronger. Okay, you've been in their life all of their life? Yes. Since birth? Yes. And um, your current situation, uh, apparently we heard testimony that the request of Kristen, she wanted the kids to stay in Marshall at Madeline's house. Is that your yes. understanding? Yep. And did you comply with that request? Yes, I did. You have a home in Albion, do you? Correct. Tell us about that. Um, that's where we had resided. Um, since the girls were born, we brought the girls back to Albion when they were born. So we had lived there together for, for the last eight years that we were together. Um, them turning nine this year in um, January. Um, and that, that's the only that's the only home the kids know as home is, is that one, you know, the girls anyways, Trenton, he may he may know the house prior to that. Um, but I, I guess I can't answer for that. OK, and uh, describe the house in Albion. Um, it, it's my mom's house. Like I said, we resided there the whole time. Um, I, I guess I don't really know. OK, uh, uh, physically, uh, how many bedrooms are there? How many? So there's uh, three bedrooms. There's, there's three bedrooms upstairs. There's four bedrooms in the basement. Uh, me and Kristen had a room. Trenton had a room. Audrey and Bailey still have their room. Their rooms still reside there at the house as my mailing address and everything through work. Okay. And so each of them had their rooms at uh, the Albion property? So the girls shared a room. Um, okay. And then Trenton had his room, and then me and Kristen had ours. Okay. And that the home is still available uh, to you and the children. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. I still go there every, every couple of days. I check my mail. Um, I go there and talk to my mom, my brother, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, who else lives there? Uh, does your mom live there? My mom lives there now, yes, correct. Okay, and did your mom live there when you and Kristen lived there? No. Okay. Where, well, she lived there. She lived, she lived there in the beginning. They had an altercation, um, and then it came to be an option where it was either uh, my mom leave or Kristen left. So my mom had my mom had my mom had moved out. Okay. And um, has your mom been an integral part of uh, the children's lives uh, through their growing up? Yes. And so you have support from uh, uh, your family side, is that correct? Absolutely. And are there other family members that you get support uh, in uh, uh, raising these children? Um, but yeah, I mean, I could call pretty much anybody. And as long as they were available and give a hand, they would absolutely do it, yes. And uh, have you, uh, do you have the support of your brother, Matthew? I do. And uh, his wife, Gabby? Yes. And are there occasions that they will uh, be in your home uh, with the children? Yes. Okay. Um,
are you uh, how are the kids doing in school? Um, Trenton, I seen his report card, I think at the end of the year, he's an A student. I'm really proud of him. Um, does great job. And as far as the kid or the, the younger ones, um, they get a, they get a number, you know, one, two, three, four. And I think they're, they're up to the standard level on where they should be. Okay. Do they appear to be doing well in school? Yes. Uh, do you attend any of the meetings or contact any of the uh, school officials in relation to their work? I, I, not that I have to know. Uh, how is your physical health? I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm good to go. Okay. And your mental health, any, any uh, concerns in that regard? No, sir. Uh, how about the uh, mental and physical health of Kristen? Do you have any concerns about that? I, 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 I don't know. Um, I guess I don't know how to answer that one. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll leave it. We'll leave it at that. Um, are, are you willing and are you able to facilitate a, the relationship of the children with their mother? Yes. Do you, do you agree that they should have a good, healthy relationship with their mother as a parent? Absolutely. Okay. And uh, uh, did you feel that she reciprocated in that regard when she kept the children from you after October 28th? Um, I think, I don't think, I don't think it was the right, um, I don't think it was the right route to go. It could have been handled different. Um, the kids need both of us together. Um, they need her as much as they need me, I believe. Okay. And has there ever been any domestic violence in the relationship between you and Kristen? No. Okay. Um, are you asking that the court continue your your uh, physical custody or your joint physical custody and joint legal custody with Kristen as to yeah. the three children? Yes, I think that, that temporary worked good. I think it worked good enough to where we carried it on until we had an altercation about a medical bill. Okay, and do uh, you think that's in the best interest of the children? Yes. Okay, do you realize that this is about the best interest of the children, not the best interest of the parent? Correct. Okay. Um, I have no further questions, Your Honor. Ms. Terranova? Thank you, Runner. Mr. Wolkowitz, did I say that correctly? Uh, good enough. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll say it if I didn't say oh, it. You're good. <laughs> okay. Um, did you and Kristen also split up in 2018? 2018. So, I th yeah, I think it was, it was for a month or two. Um, for one or two months, you split up in 2018. Yep. Okay. And um, the, did you allow the children to watch the Zoom hearing from the last time you and Kristen were in court? So they, they were, they were here, they, they weren't, they weren't watching it now, but it was on, it was on the TV. They, they, they walked in, it was on the TV and, and, and that was that. It was on the TV that where you were having the hearing or it was on a separate TV? It was on the TV and I had it on my phone because it's viewed live on YouTube. So who was watching it viewed live on YouTube on the TV? It, it was just on TV. I was watching it as well. I'm confused. You were Zooming on your phone, but then you also had it on your TV. Then I had it on the TV as well. Yep. Okay. And who was present in your home on that day? My mom and my grandma. Okay. Were they watching it on TV? If, if they were in the room when they caught it, yes. They were right. here for the matter itself, within itself. Okay. So the TV is, is the TV in the living room? Correct. Okay. And so your children were present in the home at that time, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you think it's appropriate that um, your children were in the home and watching a live stream of a court action between you and their mother? Um, probably not. Okay. Now, have you texted Kristen um, in regard to um, working out an agreement and stated to her, um, not paying child support and extracurriculars, you want your stuff, come to an agreement by the end of the month, or I will throw it in the dumpster. Do yes. you recall texting that to Kristen? Yep. Okay. And in the stuff that you're throwing in the dumpster, it, it's regarding the personal property that was still, that's still in the home in Albion. Correct. Okay. And is it fair to say that you made comments to that, to her by text message on more than one occasion regarding she'll get her stuff to an agreement? Yes. Okay. And is it fair that your continued offers are that 50-50 um, custody and no child support? No, what was that again? I'm sorry. Is it correct that your offers with Kristen and text messages 
are that you want 50-50 custody and not to pay child support? Your Honor, I'm not sure that uh, uh, settlement negotiations even between parties is admissible in relation to this particular matter. And I, I guess- I'm sorry, Your Honor, I could not hear you. There was some feedback. Okay, now your, your response to uh, Mr. Schaefer's objection. I'll rephrase my question, Your Honor. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so you're seeking 50-50 custody of your children, is that correct? Yes, I, I, I had made the offer and I think that was what was best for our kids. Okay, and um, do you believe it's appropriate that you pay child support to Kristen? I think everything should be split down the middle. Okay, and you just testified that in 2018, or excuse me, 2022, you made between $78,000 and $80,000. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Now, has Kristen ever made seventy-eight dollars to $80,000 during your relationship together? No, because I worked and I was the main provider, the sole provider for our family, so that way she could stay at home because I figured that was the best, um, the best option for us with our kids. Okay, so is the answer no, she has never made that income? Correct. Okay. And but could she, yes. <laughs> Do you understand that um, if there is, if Kristen earns less money than you, that you would be obligated to pay child support, even if it's 50-50 custody? Yep. Okay. Now you've indicated that um, you worked during the relationship when you and Miss Newby were together, correct? Yep. And that enabled her to be the um, a stay-at-home mother? Correct. Did Kristen ever have jobs um, while the two of you were together? So she worked at Arby's and prior to us getting together, um, she worked, she did that um, without exact time and dates. Um, she ended up stopping that when she got pregnant with the girls. Um, so I say for the last eight years, she hasn't worked. Um, she does do her side cleaning jobs for cash on the side. Um, she did that up until we split up. Um, does she do that now or not? I don't know. Um, other than that, then no. Okay. And you said cleaning, like she cleaned homes, businesses? Correct. Both. Yep. Both? Okay. Yep. And she did that while the two of you were together. Correct. Okay. So have you always worked the night shift? So this is really only my second job. I started my first job back in 07. I was there until 17, 16. So I was there for 13 years. Um, and I've resided at Tenneco since then. So I've been there for the four years, for four years. Okay. And you stated that when the two of you were together, you believed it was best for Kristen to stay home with the kids, correct? As far as the kids being younger, yes, daycare was expensive um, for her to be more, more a stay-at-home mom and be interactive with the kids. Um, yes, I, I did what I thought was best for the children, correct. Okay. And during that time, do you think she did a good job um, uh, taking care of the children while you were working? I do. Okay. And um, did Kristen predominantly take the um, children to their doctor appointments? Correct. And did Kristen volunteer at the children's schools? Uh, she, she went from time to time. Yep, absolutely. We, she we attend, make, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, you, go, you go ahead. Would she attend field trips with the children? Yes. Would she go to the school parties for the children? Yes. And well, did, oh, go ahead. did she attend school conferences? Yes. Okay. Did you, it, it's correct that you didn't attend school conferences when you were together. Is that correct? I, I would never say that. There, there were some I did go to. When I was able to go, I would go. Okay. And when, um, would Kristen provide um, the meals for the family as well? Correct. And did she, and I'm referring to the time that the two of you were living together, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not referring to what you're doing now. Um, but she would provide, was it breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Um, if the kids were in, yeah, yeah, the kids were in school, yep, they, we got up, we did breakfast together with the kids. The, the younger ones, Trent was obviously already um, ready for school. Um, so he was one step ahead of me before the time I got home. Um, when I got home from work, we would do the breakfast together. Kids were obviously at school for lunch, so we would pack lunches together. Um, and dinner was prepared on her, by her on her end um, in the evening. Okay. Would, um, did Kristen primarily um, do the laundry for the family? Uh, she would do and I would help. Okay. And again, none, none of that was stuff was because I wasn't capable of doing it. It was because of, of, of work. Okay. And you described that you have a close relation with your children. Describe the relationship the children have with their mom. Um, I, I think it's just as good as mine. And you believe that the children are bonded to their mother? Yes. Do you agree that, um, I understand that you were working, um, but during that time when you were together that she primarily provided the day-to-day -day care for the children? Are you asking if she did? Yes. Yeah. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. And um, 
and none of your kids at this time have any special medical needs. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And you, is it your plan at this time to stay living with um, Madeline? Um, but we're, I mean, we're going to buy a house, we're going to combine a house come spring. Um, but I mean, I will, I will still continue to reside here if, if that's what works best for Kristen. Um, but again, my address is still at the house. I have capable of taking them and staying there as well. But do you, I guess, where do you live? Where do you currently live? I stay here. My address is in Albion. So if, if, if anything, I live in Albion, but I stay here. I choose to stay here. Where do you sleep? Where do you sleep? I guess during the day because you work in the evenings. Where do you sleep during the day in Elbion or? I stay here and I stay there. Okay. <clears throat> now, do you understand that? Do you understand Kristen's concern with you having the children overnight because you are at work? No. Okay. Do you understand that that is her? I, I know you don't agree with her concern, but do you understand that that's one of her concerns of you having 50 50 custody is that you work in the evenings? Yes. Okay. I have nothing further. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Schaefer. Uh, during the time that you and Kristen lived together until March 1 of 22, you worked the night shift, did you not? Correct. And uh, you uh, had kind of the same schedule that you uh, told us about now that you come home, you uh, get the kids off to school and are there to see them when they get home. Is that correct? Absolutely. Nothing Nothing has typically changed other than I stay here um, now than, than we were together when we um, resided in Albion together. So you responded and said that you don't understand her concern about the night shift. Uh, is there any concern from your standpoint that the children are not properly cared for? No, if they were unproperly cared for, then it'd be an issue. But I think they're properly cared for. Um, they have a good bond with my girlfriend. Um, I go to work and they sleep, and I'm up when they. I'm here when they get or up. I'm here in the morning when they get up for for school. So I don't. I, again, I don't see that being a problem. Okay, and uh, that's basically the same uh, uh, schedule that you had when you and Kristen lived together. Correct. She was at home with the kids while I worked, um, and then I came home, and then we did our routine. Same thing here. Madeline's here with the kids while I work. I'm home in the morning when they get up and to get them off the bus. And uh, yours and Madeline's uh, schedules complement each other since she's a day shift and you are the night shift. Is that correct? Yep. Yes, that works best for us. Yep. Uh, I, do you have any concern about uh, uh, the living arrangements of uh, Kristen? Um. I mean, the kids, I don't think the kids really said anything about, about that over there, nor, but I haven't asked them either. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, this personal property uh, issue and the payment of the bill, uh, did you feel it was reasonable from a Christian standpoint to keep the children from you because she was quarreling with you about the payment of a bill? I think the action of keeping the kids from me because I denied to pay the full dental bill was unacceptable. Yeah. Did you express that to her? I did. Did she text you numerous times indicating that uh, that bill had to be paid or she wasn't going to make the children available? I'm, I'm sure there was text messages in there. Um, she, she also, and then again, I, I would only get the kids on the weekends. Um, but and I told her, I think the bill just more or less should be split down to half. You know, I mean, there's no reason why I should pay it all, whether if whatever her reason was for no money or, or too much money. Um, I just think it was evenly, it should have been evenly split down the, down the middle. And uh, are you aware of uh, postings that she made uh, to your son in regard to this quarrel? Yes. And uh, your honor, I would ask that uh, my exhibit D as in dog be uh, brought up. Ms. Terranova, do you have exhibit D that I sent you? Yes, I do okay. have exhibit D. Okay, very good. Uh, let me see if I can do that without being brought up then since everybody's got a paper copy. Uh, Mark, have are you familiar with this uh, uh, email or text with your son and Kristen concerning uh, you, uh, uh, him staying with you and the reasons why he can't stay with you? Am I familiar why he can't stay with me? Oh, are you familiar with that document as D is that we had submitted? Correct. Uh, yeah, you provided that to me, did you not? I did. Does that appear to be a uh, conversation between Kristen and your son? Correct. And um, how did you... How did you come uh, in, in contact with that? Um, so Trenton had left his phone here um, and I had just opened it up. Actually, I went to go plug the phone and Snapchat was still loaded. Um, so I just clicked on the name, I scrolled up and then it happened to be one of the last messages before he was picked up, I believe. Okay, and uh, <coughs> does that exhibit accurately reflect what you had found on uh, Trenton's phone? Yes. Your Honor, I would offer D and evidence. Okay, Mr. Arnova, any response? 
Objection, Your Honor. It's um, hearsay. It's it's uh, well, against it, the, it's, okay. Go it's ahead. Submission against the party uh, opponent, Your Honor. <coughs> Your Honor, there's no. Oh, sorry. Um, there are statements from the minor child, which is clearly hearsay, Your Honor, taken off his phone. He's the only one that can set the foundation regarding um, messages on his phone, Your Honor. I don't believe it can come in. Well, it does have uh, have text from the uh, plaintiff, clearly uh, refers to her as mom, etc. <coughs> is, is she disputing her, uh, again, her text? <coughs> Mr. Erno? Is she disputing that she had a text message with her son? Yeah. No. Okay. Then why would it not be a party admission then? Your Honor, I just don't believe that it can properly come in as far as from a text, from a screenshot from a son's phone, Your Honor. I mean, if this, if the court's going to let it in, they're going to let it in. I just, I still think it's hearsay. Well, what the court will do is, uh, court does note that, uh, again, there's, it doesn't appear uh, most of it, I would guess I say that there's very little from the uh, child. The court would uh, would strike any uh, response by the child. But uh, again, as it relates to the uh, statements by the uh, plaintiff, the court will admit the exhibits as it relates to her communication to the, to the son. Did you, uh, when you review this, did you think that was appropriate communications with your son by your uh, by Kristen? I did not think it was acceptable, no. And um, do you believe that that was uh, an effort on her part to uh, uh, put a wedge between your relationship uh, with your son? Absolutely. Objection leading. I'll rephrase it, Your Honor. Uh, what effect do you think that that had in relation to your son and your relationship? Um, I think I don't, I don't think that made him feel good um i think that comment was made to be to belittle me and made me um to be up the bad guy okay um, i don't i don't think that changed our relationship between me and him um but it was definitely um proposed to um like i guess downgrade or belittle, belittle me okay uh when you and uh christian were together uh your your uh activity of caring for the domestic chores with the children such as breakfast and getting them to school and picking them up uh, is the same as it is now? Correct. Okay. And uh, you uh, indicated that you did assist in the laundry and some of the other domestic uh, when you were available. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. Um, did she uh, financially contribute to the family unit when you two were together? So when we were together, um, she did her cleaning cares, and I think I, um, and I don't know how to be honest how the how the agreement um, came about, but she would give me two hundred bucks a month for utilities, and then everything else beyond that was was covered for me by me. Okay. So uh, during the time that you were together with Kristen, did you have a division of labor? You were the breadwinner, and she did a lot of the domestic chores around the house. Is that a fair statement? Correct. Did she ever express to you while you were together that she was concerned about your having the night shift? No. No further questions, Ron. Okay, Ms. Terranova. Thank you. When you and Kristen were together, um, you took the children to school every day? I, I would take the younger ones to the bus, yes. Every day you took the younger ones to the bus? I would, I would say 90% of the time, yes. And then what did Trenton do? Trenton was already on the bus because he was in middle school at that time. Okay. And would Kristen get him on the bus or make, ensure that he got on the bus? Kristen would take him to the bus. I would get home. We would do the younger, the I say younger kids, I, say, I should say the twins. We did the twins together. We got them up. We got their hair brushed, their teeth brushed, breakfast, or, um, breakfast done, lunch is packed. Um, and then I would take them to the bus. During your relationship, didn't Kristen tell you that the third shift was not good on the relationship between the two of you? Um, I mean, we didn't we didn't see each other a lot, um, but again, it wasn't. I guess it was um, best interest for the, for the family. I took I took this job to to to, to better myself, ourselves, our family. Um, in, in the end, it was it was to be to become better. 
didn't she express that she didn't believe that she believed it was affecting um, your ability to parent the children as well? I, I don't think she ever expressed that, no. And how long has Trenton been sleeping on the couch at Maddie's home? Um, I, I would say since the temporary order. <coughs> I have nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Shaver? No, nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, next witness. And uh, how are you related to Mark? Mark is my son. And uh, do you know Kristen? I do. And you know the three children uh, that they have born in this world? Yes. And uh, uh, what sort of role have you played in their life? Uh, you've got uh, grandchildren that are 12 and eight years old. Uh, how often would you see them? They came to live at my house in Albion. Uh, Trenton was between one and two. Um, the girls came home from the hospital to our house in Albion. Um, uh, I lived there until 2000, beginning of 2017. I've always been a part of their life. Um, and during the, during the time that you uh, lived in the same home with Kristen and Mark and the kids, uh, did you make observations as to... Uh, uh, the parenting skills of uh, both of the parents? I, I did. And uh, what observations did you make as to what Mark did in relation to parenting of the children? I think Mark did a good job. Um, I see a lot of my qualities in him. What do you mean by that? Loving, nurturing, uh, attentive to their needs. And uh, did you see that uh, relationship between the children and Mark? Yes. And did you uh, see Mark fostering that relationship between them? Yes. What things did you observe Mark do in relation to the children that you think fostered that relationship? Whatever the kids would need, just the, the hugging, the touching, um, the when they were sick, what can daddy get you? You know, can daddy make you feel better? Daddy, I get you some medicine, whatever. Okay. Uh, did you ever see anything inappropriate that Mark did in, in relation to his parenting skills with the children? Never. After you left the home, how often would you see the family unit? Um, they, they became very busy, a busy family. Um, but I would, I would see them probably once a week. Uh, I right. would talk to Mark more than that, but. And would you see them in the Albion home? Either that or uh, Trenton played sports. I tried to hit the sporting event, usually on a Saturday. And uh, did you observe Mark there at the extracurricular activities that you attended? Yes, when Mark, before he took the job at Tenneco, he was on day shift. With all right. usually weekends off. Okay, and did Mark make all or most or some of the extracurricular activities that you attended? Uh, I would say 99% of them, yes, all of them. Okay, and did Kristen attend these also? Yes. Okay, and uh, did you uh, observe Mark as a full-time dad or uh, a part-time dad in your observations of him? Um. Uh, definitely a full-time dad. Uh, he may have been home more in the evenings when he was on day shift, of course, but even after he went to third shift, um, he would be up during the day when the kids came home because he slept while they were in school. Okay. And uh, does Mark still have uh, uh, access to that uh, home in Albion? Absolutely. And uh, do the kids still have their rooms there? Absolutely. In and fact, I, uh, shortly after Kristen and Mark separated, I spent about $500 to redo the girls' bedroom. So that, that's still available to the girls? It is. Okay. And um, you as a grandmother and having, uh, I guess, a long relationship with this family unit, do you have an opinion as to what is in the best interest of these minor children as to uh, where they should uh, uh, be in physical custody? Objection, Your Honor. I don't think this witness can testify as 
to the best interest of the minor children. I think uh, the court will note that it is a, a judicial determination, but I think uh, she can give a, an opinion or a lay opinion as to what she believes is best for the kids. <clears throat> do you have an opinion as to what would be in the best of the children? I do. I do okay. believe, I believe that Kristen has always been a good mom. And even at times when her and I did not agree on things, I could never say she was a bad mom. And I would never say that. I believe the children love her and I believe the children love Mark. The children love her side of the family and they love my side, our side of the family. I think the kids should have their week on week off. Um, but I do believe that there needs to be positive encouragement regarding the other parent. I, I, I just think, I think that Mark and Kristen need to try to get along for the kids. I don't think there should be negativism spoken about the other one. Um, I, I, I think the family needs to be nurtured. The kids need to be nurtured and not hear negativity about the other parent. Okay. Am I hearing that uh, you feel that both parents are good parents to these kids and they both should have uh, an equal station in their life? I do. I don't necessarily agree since Kristen has left with some of the things that has been said to the kids that I've heard. Um, I think that needs to stop. These are babies. We're to protect them, not okay. play them as pawns to your own personal benefit. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Terranova. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you, do you own the home in Albion? Yes. Okay. And has Kristen reached out to you about obtaining her personal belongings that are still in that home? Yeah, I think she sent me a message one time. Okay, and you did not respond to her, correct? I have no response, no. Are her I, items still located in your home? I believe some things may still be hers. I don't know what's hers, what's Mark. And where are they located? Your Honor, I guess I'm going to object as to the relevance. Uh, this is not a, a property division case. It's a custody. The only reason that the uh, property issue is relevant is to the motivation as to uh, the whereabouts of it or the return of it is not subject to this action. Ms. Terranova? Your Honor, I agree that the parties aren't married, in, but regarding a property division, that has there's been testimony um, already put into evidence regarding um, disputes over personal property and how that's also led to, um, you know, behaviors on the part of the defendant throwing out the things and the such. So I think I'm free to ask the owner of the home if a party has reached out to her as well for the property. I don't think it's relevant to the issue, Your Honor. The only relevance is why the, the children were kept from uh, my client uh, as to the ownership of it really doesn't make any difference. Well, there, there's, there's limited relevance, but I'll allow Ms. Terranova to address it a little bit because it was addressed uh, on uh, in prior testimony. Does your daughter Gabby live in the home as well? My daughter-in-law, yes, she does. I apologize, daughter-in-law. Okay. And um, is is Gabby married to your son, Matthew? Matthew, yes. How many bedrooms are in the Elbian home? Seven. Three bathrooms. Okay. And I guess just to go back, you did not respond to Kristen when she um, texted, text messaged you about her belongings, correct? I have not responded back to her, back to her sister. I have completely stepped away from this. This is between her and Mark, but I will tell you that my basement floods, it has, and there were some things that have been thrown away in the dumpster. Um, did you, were you live streaming this hearing this morning? Am I live streaming? Or were you watching the live stream of the hearing this morning? I've been in the waiting room. Okay. And then, so you haven't watched the hearing yet today? No. Okay. When you were living in the home at the same time with Kristen and your son, um, Kristen would provide the primary care for the kids when your son was at work. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Or her mother. <clears throat> Her mother also lived in our home off and on several times. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Okay, Mr. Schaefer, any uh, re uh, redirect? Uh, just to follow up. So Chris's mother lived there for a time period too? 
Yes, uh, she did. How long did she live there? Um, off and on. I, you know, I bought the house in December of nine. Uh, Trenton was born May of ten. I think they moved into my house in eleven. It's it's hard for me to remember. Um, but Sandy, I had a bedroom at one time at my house. Another time, she slept on the couch for a long time. Um, she, I guess she had nowhere to go. Okay. Well, did, uh, during the times that she was there, then she was part of the family unit too, and and participated in care for the children. Yes. And uh, can you give me an idea? I mean, did she live there uh, a year or more, or less? Yes. Or a, a year. Yes. Or I, I know at one time uh, it was about a year that she had been in in the house when I was still living there. Okay, no further questions, Your Honor. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Schaefer. Would you uh, state your full name and spell your last name, please? Gabriella Page Wakowitz, W-O-L-K-I-E-W-I, season cat, season zebra. And uh, how do you fit in on this family uh, uh, in relation to Mark Wakowitz? Uh, what's your relationship? I'm his sister-in-law. And you're married to Matthew, is that correct? Correct. Do you know Kristen also? Yes. How long have you known Kristen? Since 2014. And how long have you known uh, Mark? 2014. And um, how was it that you happened to know them at that point in time? Uh, that's when my husband, Matthew, and I started dating. Uh, <coughs> we all lived together back in 2014 until 2015 until... We moved to Florida. <laughs> and where did you live when you say you all lived together? We lived here in Albion at the house the kids grew up in. Okay. And is this the uh, uh, Mark's mother's house? <laughs> Mother-in-law's residence, yes. And uh, how long did you live together with Kristen and Mark and the kids, their kids, uh, back in 14 and 15? about a year and four months. Okay. And did you have occasion to uh, observe the, who was taking care of and what the family unit was as to Mark and Kristen as it relates to their three children? Yes. Could you uh, state to the court what you observed as to uh, Mark's role as a parent during that time period? Yes. So back then, uh, Mark was working at, Con can you hear me okay? Yes, go yeah. ahead. Okay. Mark was working at Caster Concepts. He was on first shift. So, you know, he'd, you know, go to work. He'd always come home on lunchtime. Um, at that time, you know, Kristen was home with the kids. Um, so, you know, that allowed him to, you know, still do things with the kids after school, like, you know, dinner time and um, help with bedtime or, you know, whatever that was. But the kids weren't, you know, of age to be involved in sports yet. But it was, you know, a, a teamwork you know she was home with kids raising the girls because they were you know under the age of one and Trenton was about four years old so the kids weren't in school yet and then he was at work so did you uh, observe Mark uh, do the fatherly things for these three children absolutely and uh, did he appear to be an appropriate father for uh, caring for these children absolutely and uh, how about Kristen uh, what comments do you have about her parenting skills at that point in time she, she, she was a great mom. She's a great mom. Okay. And uh, did you observe these two parents as co-parenting these three children? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And uh, then you said you went to Florida. Uh, what year did you go to Florida? October, 2015. And then we moved back. We went from Florida to South Carolina in 2016 and we moved back in 2019. And since 2019, have you had occasion to observe this family unit of Mark and Kristen and the three kids? Yes. And how often would you see them? Um, I would say, I mean, at least at least once a month, maybe every couple months, you know, just depending on, I mean, that, the kids are very busy involved in sports and stuff, you know, so we see them at, you know, games and recitals and things like that. Um, and then, you know, COVID hit, so that kind of took a toll on things, but. Okay. Did you see them at the Albion residence? Yes. Okay, and uh, uh, did you uh, make the same observations about uh, uh, the parenting skills of both the parents at that point in time? Yes, it was still, um, you know, Mark going to work, providing, and then um, 
Kristen, you know, home with the kids, taking care of the kids. And when he wasn't working, he was doing what he can to, you know, still do fun activities with the kids, you know, every weekend, every chance they could, they were always, you know, out trying to do something fun, you know. Okay. Did you observe uh, Mark at the extracurricular activities, the athletic events for the kids? Yes, he has gone to very, very many. I mean, even practices if he can. Okay. And uh, what observations did you make as to the, uh, the bonding or the relationship between the kids and Mark? They love their dad. And I mean, they love their mom too. So it's, it's, it's equal. There's no one over the other. Okay. And um, okay, no further questions, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Terranova. And so the time period that you lived um, in the same home with Kristen and Mark was 2014 to 2015. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you acknowledge that when Mark was at work, Kristen was at home taking care of the children, correct? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And would Kristen continue to take care of the children in the evenings as well when Mark would get home? Yes. Okay. And would she also be caring for the children on the weekends when all of them would be home? Yes. Okay. They were both very, very hands-on. And would Kristen be preparing the meals for her family? Yes. And did you recently move back into the Albion home? Yes, back in earlier spring, summer. Did you have a text conversation with Kristen about signing a paper regarding no child support? Um, something along those lines. Okay. Did you indicate to her that um, it was your understanding that Mark wanted her to sign a um, sign that piece of paper and then she could get her belongings? Um, like I said, something, something similar to that. It was without cooperation of, it's just, it's, if he, I don't know how to explain, like, I, I have the text. So if I could, you know, I, I mean, I don't know if you still have that, Kristen. We can go through and read that. I don't want to just like guess what I'm saying, but yeah. When you said without cooperation, meaning if Kristen signed the piece of paper, then she could get her property. I'm, yes. That's a paraphrase, but is that essentially the conversation yeah. you had with Kristen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Schaefer, anything else? Was it your understanding that the cooperation had to do with making the kids available and uh, taking care of the personal property? Yeah. Okay. And uh, was this a text to you or was this a text to Mark? Uh, what, what text are you talking about? It was between her and I. Well, between the two of you? She was reaching out to me, wanting her things and had said I was just involved by not, um, you know, helping her getting her belongings and I just said, you know, I'm not, I'm not in between, you know, you being, I, I I'm not going to go behind, get involved and, in, you know, doing that. Okay. When, um, when, when was this text about? Um, probably two months ago. Okay. <clears throat> Do you know if it coordinated with uh, the time that the uh, children were not being made available to Mark? Yes, it was. The whole reason was because she didn't want, she wanted to keep the kids from Mark. And, you know, it was Mark, you know, you're, if you're not going to let me see my kids, then you don't get your stuff. And it just, is Objection. I, I believe this is hearsay. Oh, it's, it's, I, I don't believe no. it is your honor. This is, uh, she brought this up as to this text and I'm just asking about the text and the explanation behind it. Okay, well, I'm going to overrule the objection. You, you did bring and open that door, Miss uh, Terranova, so I'll let her explain. Okay, go ahead and fin finish up your explanation as your understanding of what this text was all about. Yeah, so <clears throat> it, it was all between, you know, her getting her stuff and seeing the kids. So it, Mark seeing the kids. Mark, you know, didn't want to allow her to get her stuff without him being able to see his children. Because as soon as she has everything of her own, then, you know, there's, 
there's nothing for her to cooperate with Mark. Like, okay, you have my stuff. I'll let you see my kid. I'll let you see our kids. Yep. So that was your understanding of what that text was all about. Yes. Good. Go for the question, Sharon. Ms. Terranova, anything else? Thank you. So are you stating, Mrs. Walkowitz, that Kristen said to you, Mark is not getting the kids until I get my stuff? Or are you are you testifying that that's just what you thought it was about? Well, I've I've seen texts between them. I'm not asking you about that. I'm talking about the text that Kristen sent to you. She didn't necessarily put that in the text, no. Okay. About saying he can't see the kids unless I get my stuff. Okay, so the text messages between you were just about her getting the stuff and if she would sign a piece of paper regarding an agreement, correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I have nothing further. Possible rebuttal. Uh, that was my last witness, Your Honor. So the uh, the petitioner arrests. Okay. okay.